I remember the first time I saw you, it was before you were clocking in, and I was like, oh, that's a skirt. That's fucking dope. And these are legs. Yep. And those are balls. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Matt Catalano, and I identify as a straight cis male. Is that correct? That's cute. Yes, that's cute, right? <laughs> and here with me is my non-binary friend, Fernando Asai. Isai. Isai. Today we're gonna to be talking about preferred gender pronouns. Well, it is important also to make the distinction between preferred and personal. Um, oh, Because, okay. you know, some people might might suppose that because you say preferred, uh -huh. it does, it's not like an official thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Like it's, some, it's, it's a loose, it's a loose <clears throat> term for it. When someone says it's my preferred pronoun, it, it might insinuate, or somebody might, might suppose, be, be offended by the fact that it's not an official pronoun. I'm, I'm not technically this that. Is this is just how I want I to be want. called. This is yeah. what I want. This is like my yeah. nickname. It's not my no. my yeah. my birthright or like it's set in stone. It can change, right? Yeah. It can totally. change throughout life. By the end of this conversation. Is, we can be completely different. <laughs> changing as we speak. <laughs> what is a preferred gender pronoun? We know a lot of them already. The kind of the segue out of that is that what we're trying to explore is non-binary space. Space is outside of the And that's what key, you identify as. Outside, yes, I identify as non-binary. So, and that, that means a whole bunch of things. It's mm -hmm. a whole, there's a whole mess and it's really fun. Non-binary means that I don't identify gender necessarily with either he or his or uh, she or hers. I don't necessarily conform to the social cultural norms yeah. of what it is so to be a So the non-binary would she. be like the, the non-conforming yeah. or kind of and gender it's, neutral. It's a would gateway you say drug. Too? You don't have to establish what you're going to be and you're going to have to be that for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. It's unexplored space. We're mm -hmm. exploring it now. We're exploring it with our own sexuality. We're exploring it with our, with our gender pronouns. And the reason why I think gender pronouns are so, so important is because language is how we make space for people. Language is how we uh, relate to each other within certain space. If there aren't words for who, how we identify, mm -hmm. you know, how are we supposed to feel included? This is the universe. This is the page. The universe as is defined via language. Everything and anything, not merely what is within our structure, reach, whatever, everything. All times, all spaces, all dimensions, whatever. So I'm gonna draw a circle for everything that is within our reach, right? Immediately, tangentially, non-tangentially, mathematics, etc. So I'm gonna draw a dot, a square, a line, whatever, for everything that we have words for. So most of them are gonna be in this space, right? Occasionally we'll have ones out here. Think, think of variables in mathematics. Think of the sign for infinity, right? Mm -hmm. Us as people cannot touch, reach infinity. But we have a word for it. We have a, we have a, a, a variable for it and, and we can it. use it mm -hmm. in mathematics and scaffold and get to something else that is even farther away because we have this language, we have this structure, right? So language is how we deal with a terrain. And what is a terrain? The terrain is the entire fucking universe. Mm -hmm. To some degree, what artists and scientists and what we do here, what you're doing here with, with, with exploring the space and, and you know, exploring things that are outside of what we know. Uh, one of my favorite art quotes is by Picasso. Um, art is a lie that tells the truth. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there trying to see truths that are outside of our realm of truths, by the time you bring it in, it's gonna be disambiguated, it's gonna be deformed, it's not gonna be what it was. It's gonna be an abstract in its organic piece of beautiful art. Mm -hmm. And what happens, this is how art, this is how science expands the known universe and we bring in things that mm -hmm. were not there before. Well, it starts as abstract and then we find words for it. And it starts start to make sense and then it starts to sink in and then flowers start to bloom out and a new universe is created. You know flowers are sex, right? That's why I <laughs> all over my apartment because I am very sexual. But it begins with yeah. making space. It begins with making yeah. space for people, again, maybe everyone in the room around you is cis, still introduce yourself as they, them. Uh, sorry, as he, him. <laughs> I was saying, I don't know if I changed her in the center of room, but shit, I guess I'm they, them now. Fuck it. <laughs> uh. And this is why inclusivity is so great. You know, specifically as a cis male, as a cis as female, someone who is comfortable and whose space is made in, in, in the social public mm -hmm. sphere, you have, you know, that much more uh, power to, to make sure that others have the privilege that you do. If you're not sure um, what, what gender that somebody is, yeah. how do you go about asking them what their uh, uh, PGP <clears throat> is? Do you just walk up to them and like, hey, I'm just, yeah. Not that I'm sorry. I I'm just curious. Yeah. Um. May I ask what is your preferred gender pronoun? Yeah. How do you go about doing that? It's not anybody's job to educate you. Yes. About what their gender is. They 
might not feel comfortable, they may be mm. still exploring their own space. Sure. And I'm using they, them now yeah, because yeah. it's, I don't want to assume anybody's gender and I'm not saying that that is the only gender. To some degree, it's an umbrella term. It is they, them as in, uh, I don't know what your gender is and it is mm. a safe way to approach people. <clears throat> Grammatically, it is mm. they, them is the gender, is the pronoun that we use when we don't know what somebody's gender is. Mm. It's like, oh, your cousin is coming. Are they gonna stay for dinner? Yeah, I'm a bartender. A uh, Couple people come up to the bar and for me, I'm not gonna immediately assume whatever and say, Especially hey, working in Hollywood. How's it going, man? How's it going, girl? Whatever it is. What I've kind of grown accustomed to is saying, hey, how, how are y'all doing today? Mm -hmm. In the situation though, say if it's a, a work environment or whatever it is, if you are unsure, how do you go about that? If, if you do want to know and you yeah. don't want to fuck it up, you, want, you don't want feelings to be hurt, no, you want no, to respect individuals. And, and, this is, <clears throat> and that's, you know, that's, those are the two errors that you can make. The second error is, is, is the worst one, is misidentifying someone. Yes, and because labeling they've, they've spent way. their whole life sometimes trying and to get respect. Space, and it's a yeah, They might not feel safe. Sure. And they might sure. backtrack. Yeah. So that's the, that's the worst make, the mistake that you make. So I, I lean on the side of caution in the sense of like, don't make that mistake. Instead, mm -hmm. feel comfortable with yourself, feel comfortable mm -hmm. with them. I don't want to, I don't want to misrepresent you. Sure. I don't, I don't want to make any assumptions. Do you have mm -hmm. a preferred pronoun? Sure. Is there something that you'd like to be called? And some people, some people don't know. Some mm -hmm. people know right off the bat, well, I'll tell you, thank you for asking. Yeah, um, well, I, I had that experience. It. I was yeah. uh, going Christmas tree shopping and that was with my, with my mom and brother. Mm -hmm. And they were like, why don't you, can you go ask the, the guy over there uh, for assistance because we're trying to get a tree. So then I guess the whoever it was wasn't there, went up to uh, the lady at the front and she was like, I'll go ask uh, my homegirl. Mm -hmm. And it's the same guy, same, I'm sorry, same person that, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. There's, always, there's exactly. always, it happens to me all, it, all the time. And so time. what I was gonna go into <clears throat> next was on the flip side, why should somebody try to change their language that they yeah. grew up with. First of all, language is constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. Language is always changing. Having words for all these people, for all these identities, makes space for them to be out there, makes space for them mm -hmm. to, uh, to not just identify themselves, but also put themselves out there. If all of a sudden we realize, wait a minute, we could have they, them, we could have non-binary, we could have asexual, well, whatever. Yeah, so that's what I was gonna and say. And then all of a so... sudden we realize that all of these people that we could have, uh -huh. none of them are actually represented, none of them are actually here. Well, that's what I was gonna get into next. So we have all of those different sexualities, like pansexual, polysexual, we have bisexual, we have demisexual, all these different sexualities. You have to explain some of these, because well, you have more reasons than I have. <laughs> <laughs> like when is just like too much, or is there too much, or is it that we all just want to feel yeah that we're not trapped in a box, yeah. per se. There, there, I, can, I definitely get a sense of oversaturation, not mm -hmm. just here, and not, not, ju not just in gender-related issues, just, you know, in, I, I, work in, I work in the arts. Meme culture, an oversaturation of compound, compound words, and then compounding words with visuals. We're a visual language, and yeah. visuals are around us every second. You know, how do we, when is it too much? When is, when am I? Because we, we have the LGBTQ, but then we have, that's just the umbrella we have. It There's trickles plus, down into thousands a... of, of <clears throat> different categories. And so the, that's the thing is where the issue becomes a lot more tangible is, is the fact that there, there, there's, a, there's a high suicide rate uh, in trans people. There's a high, there's a high depression rate with gener generally non-binary folk. Mm -hmm. The issue of inclusivity, again. They, they don't feel accepted is what, Specifically yeah. as, as someone as, that is cis, someone that identifies and whose gender role is reflected in the culture around us. It, it, is, it is that much more important to make sure that those around us have space and those that are not visible have space, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, even if you identify, maybe even specifically if you identify as cis male, it's mm -hmm. important to, when you introduce yourself, oh, hi, Mateo, I'm a thinker, I'm a little bit kinky, he, him. Because True. you um, make sure that those around you are aware that you're aware that yes. there is space other than your own. They just want to, at the end of the day, they want to feel included. And you don't want, they want you to don't, feel a part of society. You don't, we yeah. don't need any more boundaries around no, us. There no. are already so Nobody many Nobody wants to be put us. in boundaries. <laughs> well, unless you like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was going to say that. I was literally going to say that. Like these penguins. These penguins have no boundaries. Can we zoom into this cup really these, quick? These penguins are a little so, bit, uh, I, think, I think they might be a little bit crazy. This is an orgy of penguins that. with Ooh. no boundaries. I want to know where you're at with how can, 
not only for yourself, how can we change this society yeah. as conscious individuals I don't, I that don't just know. want love? I don't know that I have an answer for that. Yeah. It starts with the self. And I don't, I don't mean it starts with you, you know, advocating personally, mm -hmm. but be before you even advocate, it starts with the self in terms of like knowing where you are and knowing how to identify yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't mean- And I don't are mean, you comfortable with yourself first and foremost? Yeah. And I don't mean putting to, yourself in a box. Yeah. I don't mean putting yourself in the box. I mean, knowing where you are in your relation to others, knowing what are your triggers, knowing where I cannot go, where I shouldn't go, where maybe I, I'm curious about. Again, very respectfully, acknowledge mm -hmm. that people are not there to educate you. Mm -hmm. If you have to go Google that shit, And there are, there are always gonna be those out there that are gonna be completely closed off their whole lives and that's just that's just who they are. And and you know, a lot of a lot maybe a lot of their spaces just have none of these people around or they haven't mm -hmm. revealed themselves because they don't feel comfortable. And, yeah. and to some degree that's there's nothing wrong with that. Why why mm -hmm. should you be at fault for not knowing something that you've exactly. never encountered? And so as if we educate that, yeah. not you don't necessarily have to agree. You don't have to shove with it down what the it throat, is. unless that's what they want. Yes, but <laughs> listen, just listen to what these individuals right. have to say and then decide. And be How aware, you want to go about the situations. And be aware that the space is being explored as we, as mm -hmm. we speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, by now I feel like you're, I don't know what you are now. I'm fucking all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> the space is being explored. I'm a, no, I'm a, uh, <clears throat> I'm a, a, a demisexual astro gender pixie kid. We're on the West Coast, we're in Hollywood. We're, mm -hmm. we're, this, is, this is as open a space as it's going to be. Mm -hmm. It isn't as ideal, obviously. But it is always it is always the case that things have never been changing this much, and not just in the gender issues. Mm -hmm. Alexa, I'm busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know which which side to lean on in terms of inclusivity and how how whether I think that it's, it's a positive space. I see it more and more every day. I see mm -hmm. it in non in in, uh, in more inclusive bathrooms I mean, in my social yeah, institutions from, from the last ten years. Yeah. In old, I totally. actually I want to bring this up too because in the research that I did I was looking at um, a lot of non-binary mm -hmm. individuals won't won't go out because yeah. of the bathrooms, the yeah. bathroom situations. For me, it's black and white because I, who is still biologically a male, mm -hmm. will use a male bathroom. But I, you know, I'm wearing a skirt. I'm, I'm skirts because it's so fresh air. Well, they look great on you too. <laughs> I got the legs. Right? <laughs> I remember the first time I saw you, it was before you were clocking in and I was like, oh, that's a skirt. That's fucking dope. <laughs> and these are legs. <laughs> yep. And those are balls. <laughs> I am wearing underwear. <laughs> So Fernando, thank you so, so much for coming on this episode of Nightcap. Uh, if they want to follow you or find you, your, your art, any other um, things that you're involved with, how can they find you? Uh, I have an Instagram, Fernando underscore I-S-A-I. How do you I say that last name again? Isai. Um, I have a website, <laughs> FernandoIsai.com. Okay, and what's on that website? Uh, really old work. The most the most recent project is my is is this this project that I've been working on for five years, um, A to B, um, but it literally is 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 a study on language and structure mm -hmm. and and syntax and trying to approach this ethereal mm -hmm. syntax of this language that is outside of our known confines. Mm -hmm. Go check it out. Thanks again for for watching, everybody. Hope you learned something about PGPs, non-binary, and I hope you're comfortable sis. asking. Yeah, straight up. Don't be afraid to ask. I was just gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Beat me to it. Okay, fine. We're, we're even now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>